one whole year. We have been ghosted by Mr. Kanye Omari West on the topic of his 10th studio album for one whole year. Finally, it seems as if we're closer than ever to actually getting an official release for this damn thing. But a lot has happened in the past months since my last Donda update video. Maybe it's wishful thinking. But once more, one last time, let's get into the complicated rollout of Kanye West's 10th studio album, Donda, the finale. So things were really slow when part two ended. Uh, Kanye was just starting to wear the mask and while a lot of people were hopeful for a summer 2021 release, it kind of didn't seem likely we were really dry on news. Really the only things of note to talk about is that weird Kanye info we got where he had an interview uh, for a court hearing in which he wore his mask and then went off and said allegedly all these kind of wacky things before ending the call real soon. But because of that call and the information given by this really sketchy and really not uh, certified website, we all figured he was working on his latest album in Hawaii. Casey Pluto would announce a few dates for his, uh, I believe it's his like mixtape kind of before his official album release. Uh, of course the mixtape being called Who Is KC. This of course is important because Casey is kind of the protege during the Donda era, even though now with hindsight, it kind of feels like it's Vori. But his album's release and even this mixtape is definitely linked to Donda's uh, official drop. So thought that was important. And of course the date kept switching. So a lot of us really gave up hope on that one too. But shockingly in early June, Kanye would drop his first Yeezy Gap item on June 8th. He would officially put the blue puffer jacket up for pre-order. Kanye would be seen wearing this jacket just a week prior and in that same photo really the thing that made people go nuts is he was wearing Nikes. On that day the term West Day Ever would really be thrown around by everyone in Kanye's camp including his manager. Boo also added that the album was on the way but I mean in the amount of times that us Kanye fans have heard sooner uh, throughout this whole timeline we really just took that as whatever but then there were some of us who actually watched that really dumb live stream to promote the jacket and i think the less said about that the better but after actually releasing a yeezy gap product kanye is starting to be seen more and more in public and of course he's sporting that mask and then of course you have the rumors about his dating life and stuff and i don't really get into that on this channel i don't think it's that important or that drawn into the music unless it actually has a specific uh, call to in a lyric or something. My personal favorite Kanye sighting is recently when he went to Paris Fashion Week. You have all these people dressed to the nines in these suits and the, the females are in these nice dresses and then you just see Kanye in this giant black jacket with this black mask on looking straight up like a Batman supervillain. It's awesome. Not only would he visit Paris, but just a few weeks after would be seen attending a big three basketball tournament with Ice Cube. Kanye would drop the black puffer jacket that he was seen wearing uh, over in Paris on July 12th. And this would only be in countries such as Japan, Australia, England, stuff like that. Not available in the US just yet. Kanye would pop up on Pop Smoke's second posthumous album, Faith, being featured on the third track, Tell the Vision. Now this is pretty interesting that the song appears on this record because this is a track that was seen on earlier track lists for Donda back last summer. While the instrumental is believed to be reworked a little bit, and of course we never did get an official Kanye verse, maybe we will on the deluxe edition, it's still interesting that, you know, an earlier Donda song appeared on this record. The track, which also featured Pusha T, would go number one on Apple Music. Kanye would really be seen a lot in San Francisco, and while it seemed to be just another random event, a few interesting things would happen. Selena Johnson, who famously was on Kanye's All Falls Down track off his first record, The College Dropout, would meet up with Kanye in San Francisco. Kanye also would meet up with Tyler, the creator, but this time, this meetup would be a little more public, with cons taking 
a video of this meeting. Kanye was playing uh, The Life of the Party for Tyler and I'd imagine more songs, of course. And in that shot, you could see a whiteboard and it's names of many tracks expected to be on Donda. This would all happen on July 17th. And while a lot of those tracks are unknown and obviously new additions to a very changed album from last August record, the tracks we would know that are listed on that whiteboard would be Hurricane, 24, Donda, and I Know God Breathed on This. The caption of the post would read Summer 21. Later that night, someone on the West Sub Ever subreddit would discover that in Atlanta for the Mercedes-Benz Stadium, an event was created titled Rap Artist Pop-Up Event or Listening Party. The event was set for Thursday, July 22nd. People would start to kind of talk about who this could be, and we kind of narrowed it down to either Drake or Kanye. Then, the Instagram account Donda's Place would post a screenshot of a private invitation to a listening party. The event would be set for July 18th, and the invitation would read this. Kanye West is hosting a private album launch party. Really can't get more specific than that. The event would be confirmed by a church LV pastor on a Sunday sermon. It's, it's the first drop of what the new album is going to be like. Let me tell you how significant this is. The next, the next place they're going to do it is at Mercedes-Benz Stadium. Justin LaBoy, who is someone who was pictured with Kanye on the 17th, would tweet out that he had heard Kanye's upcoming record fully. He said that he was really impressed and that it almost sounded like Kanye was hungry. He was rapping so well. And while we'll talk about this Justin man a lot more later on, the private listening event in Las Vegas will give us a lot of interesting information. First off, the first track that we saw on that earlier whiteboard, Come to Life, would allegedly have some sort of feature from Tyler the Creator. We would later figure out that this was a production feature, but we thought this was an actual verse because someone took a picture who was behind the production of the church event, and you could see that there's like a audio file for the song, which was the first song they played there, and it says Tyler vocals. So a very, very, very big shout out to Jabba. He is someone who went to this event and gave us uh, a report of what he heard. He didn't write everything down. It's not all exact, but this is really interesting. And I honestly find these videos to be like a time capsule of all the news we got. That's gonna be really fun to look back on. So let's just see the information he gave us. So first off, he reported that Travis Scott, Post Malone, Playboy Cardi, Lil Baby, and Casey Pluto were the featured artists. Post Malone, of course, would not be featured. It was actually Vori, but their voices are kind of similar, so of course he gets a pass on that. He also kind of misinterpreted Playboy Cardi for Baby Keem, but we'll talk about that in a second. So the tracks played at this event were Come to Life, featuring Tyler, the Creator. Now that, of course, could be just production, but we'll see. Donda, Hurricane, featuring Lil Baby, Life of the Party, 24 featuring Vori, uh, which I think was, it could have been Vori, but it could have been misinterpreted for Casey Pluto. Um, Keep My Spirit Alive featuring Griselda and Casey Pluto. Uh, Praise God featuring Playboy Cardi and Travis Scott. This would later be corrected as Travis Scott and uh, Baby Keem. But of course, Baby Keem and Playboy Cardi sound very similar. A track called New Again would be played at this show, of course, that's unfortunately not New Body. The untitled Kim Kardashian birthday song would also be played at this show, and of course it has finished lyrics. Uh, and then there would be also four other songs played that he just kind of lost uh, info on or didn't remember correctly, which I respect him just admitting that rather than trying to lie to us and tell us his information. So again, shout out to Jabba. Most attendees of this event would basically say around the same thing. The album was really done well, the production was great, and Kanye really spit a lot of great verses, it sounded overall finished to them. With all this information, we are all getting very excited, and the Atlanta listening party would be publicly announced by the arena and Pusha T on Monday with tickets releasing at 1 p.m. Eastern. A painting would kind of be attached to this event's promotion. I'm definitely gonna butcher this name, but the piece is done by Luis Borgois. She is a female artist who 
lost her mother at a young age and in order to cope with the loss of her uh, parent. She basically painted these pieces that Kanye of course could relate to because of the album's concepts and of course uh, he lost his mother as well so we kind of vibed with the painting and at first we thought this was the album cover. Kanye without ever saying a word officially would sell out Mercedes-Benz Stadium. Of course it's important to note that some tickets would not be available so he didn't sell out the whole entire 70,000. I know there's Kanye haters who are gonna be like he didn't do shit. Uh, the reason he didn't sell those tickets out is because they simply weren't on sale. The whole entire floor of the arena was set up for Kanye to perform at and also there would be some sections roped off at the very top for lighting and other production use. Cons would post a picture of a Kanye sketch uh, on this notepad Kanye basically we know it's him because he signed off Kanye West or whatever but he has these like triangles drawn and of course he has written on the paper rolling loud. The post would be taken down very quickly and the Donda experience would never happen as Kanye would cancel it later on. As Tuesday came around Kanye would make his official return to Instagram posting some pretty neat pictures. Later that day a song off of Kanye's new record officially announced as Donda uh, titled No Child Left Behind would be the score in a Beats ad. The ad would feature Olympic athlete Shikari Richardson and in the ad it would officially be announced that the Atlanta listening party would be live streamed on Apple Music. As Thursday inched closer fans would get more excited for this event. Kanye would post himself in the Mercedes-Benz Stadium and we would see various clips and photos of him in the studio with Mike Dean and Playboy Cardi and even with Rick Rubin. Another track list would be seen on the day of the event with Kanye looking very buff but as the show officially began some interesting things would occur. Kanye of course was late and the live stream was set to start at 8 p.m. Eastern. Also, while some fans thought that the painting used to hype up this event was the official album cover for Donda, after getting our eyes on some merch and later seeing Apple Music's ads for this event, we would come to realize that the cover would actually be a picture of a young Donda West. The most interesting thing about this Atlanta listening event was the tracks played were just very different from those heard in Las Vegas. Also, due to the acoustics in the arena, the fans that attended this event really couldn't hear the lyrics of the tracks played. The live stream that fans at home got to hear really had no bass to it. Now I was in the arena for this listening event and I can confirm that there was a whole lot of bass on this album, but that really wasn't my issue with this event. While the instrumentals were really great, some people would complain that they really led to something and never had a beat drop. And that also Kanye's lyrics kind of sounded like almost mumbled demos. They weren't really finished. Some people kind of slept on the design of the event, but I actually thought it was pretty genius. It's minimalistic with Kanye being out there alone on this white tarp while friends and family are on the sidelines, unable to touch and hang out with him and really consult him as there's moments listening to this record where he's hearing his mom talking about his family breaking up and he's crying. The dramatic lighting shining down on Kanye really shows that he's in a really isolated state and I just thought that was brilliant. The track list heard at the listening party was 24 featuring Casey Pluto, South Carolina featuring Tony Williams and Pusha T, Junya featuring Playboy Cardi, Remote, Praise God featuring Travis Scott and Baby Keem, Losing My Family, Hurricane featuring Lil Baby and Casey Pluto again. Moon, which I think is an outro to Hurricane. Uh, Don Tolliver's on this one, but I don't think it's a separate track. If so, it's like a Frank's track situation to Wolves. Then we had the track Jonah featuring Vori, Ty Dolla Sign, and Lil Durk. Pure Souls featuring Roddy Rich. New Again, We Made It featuring Pop Smoke. I Know God Breathed on This featuring Vori. No Child Left Behind featuring Vori. And then finally, Going to Jail featuring Jay-Z. The most disappointing part about going to that listening event was really walking out of the stadium, digging this whole entire thing, and then you go on your phone and realize that Jay-Z was on the final track. You got to be there in person for the throne's return, and you didn't even fucking know it. All jokes aside, this was kind of a pulverizing listening party. Um, Twitter seemed to actually really like it, while Reddit 
And particularly, Kanye subreddit seemed to really hate this thing. The fact that Kanye played that Pop Smoke like remix or whatever, it kind of tells me a few things. Either the album wasn't fully done, or Kanye scrapped most of the stuff from the Las Vegas listening party and last minute decided to change up the album then, and that's why the album was really feature heavy. I personally subscribe to the theory that Kanye saved some of the more personal and really deep tracks for a first listen, uh, without the family obviously being there live, but I guess we'll see when the thing officially releases. While we all were pretty negative about the album actually releasing on time, I don't think a lot of us really would have sunk our teeth into this theory that Kanye was actually going to drop an album as the announced date for once if his label and the people around him didn't assure fans and take the extra mile to tell us that it was certainly coming out on that Friday just so many times. Advertisements would even air in other countries to promote Donda. So a lot of fans actually bought into the idea that they were really just putting the final touches and it was going to be out on the 23rd. Also, the Yeezy Gap black puffer jacket would be released in the US. Even though everyone, from people who were featured on the album to his manager, Boo, would try to tell us that this thing was coming out before midnight, the album would not be released. Now here's where my beef with this guy Justin LeBoy begins, because this is a guy who in the evening of Friday told fans, Start refreshing your streaming platforms. Donda's coming before midnight. You're ready. Start refreshing. It's just about to be there. And then later, of course, he's the one to deliver the news, which I don't even know if it's factual at this point, because we'll talk about that in a second, that the date has been pushed back to August 6th, two weeks from that day that he said, start refreshing. Now, despite that tweet, and by the way, we don't exactly know how accurate this Justin fellow is, even though he did, he did hear the record. It's not even allegedly. He was there with Kanye. A man working with Mike Dean, mixing the album Digital Nas, would say in response to a DM that August 6th is not the release date. It's coming earlier. I don't know if this delay was like a last minute thing, or maybe this, maybe this Justin guy didn't even know, but we could see like Mike Dean was really mixing this album, uh, even Friday, and they allegedly pulled an all nighter. But the date August 6th really doesn't work for many reasons. One, Kanye's alleged protege for the Donda project, Casey Pluto, was set to release some music on that day. And he's sticking to that day. After the August 6th announcement, he posted something saying, you ready August 6th? And on that post, we know he's not talking about Donda because he has a video off of who is KC. Also, a Abstract Mind record, which is produced by Kanye, is set to be released on that date. And while you could say, well, Abstract Mind isn't as big as Kanye, they're definitely gonna move the date back. Just a few minutes ago for me recording this, they put their record up for pre-ad on all streaming services. It's definitely dropping August 6th. Another odd social media event would come when Cons would tweet out uh, asking when Drake was releasing his album, even tagging Swizz Beats, a man responsible for really scheduling versus battles between artists. Now we don't know what Khan's intentions were. It's clear he's talking about we as in Kanye and I, everyone working on Donda. He could be doing this because he doesn't want to step on Drake's toes and upload the album on the same day that he's going to. Or Kanye could be trying to compete with Drake and ruin Drake's album rollout. As if that wasn't weird enough, an even bigger shock would occur when this is all happening on the Saturday after Kanye's listening event on Thursday. Kanye would return to Instagram here. Again, not saying a word, not typing a caption, but he would basically post as he was attending a soccer game at Mercedes-Benz Stadium. One post would see him vibing out with a crowd chanting as the game raged on. Another would see him talking to this guy who was raving about the Donda listening event and the songs we heard saying like, you're doing great stuff. While we knew that Kanye was working on this album uh, before the listening event at Mercedes-Benz Stadium, we would, on this day, get news that Kanye had officially set up a full, like, hotel-type setup at this stadium. I'm talking a studio, I'm talking beds, I'm talking even a chef. Kanye is basically living at the Mercedes-Benz Stadium as I'm filming this video to finish Donda. In the visitor's locker room of the arena, Kanye, Mike Dean, and others are putting the finishing touches on Kanye's 10th studio album. 
The Mercedes-Benz Stadium has essentially become a staple of this album rollout, with the finishing touches on the record being added there. It appears that Kanye's studio rules have returned as well for Donda. Kanye is legitimately camping out at this stadium. He's even posted on Instagram a view of his bedroom. There are plans for a second listening party on the 5th of August. That is, again, the Thursday before um, the Friday that Donda is allegedly supposed to release. Kanye's team has reached out to many reputable publications, telling them that the album is to be expected on the 6th. As we get closer and closer to the 6th, and we hear more and more snippets, I mean, we've got a listen at Playboy Cardi on Off The Grid. It seems like this album has been pushed back just two weeks for the better. We shall see how Donda evolves even more as we inch closer and closer to Thursday and midnight for hopefully a smooth album release.